Hey friend, Russ here with bishopswest.com. Um, just had a couple little tips, I guess, that I wanted to show you today, um, especially if you're brand new to Bitweek Studio. These will come in really handy for you. Um, but I kind of wanted to focus on like stuff that you could use for songwriting or arranging. To start out with, just wanted to show you, if you go to the opening panel and you click on location, settings, locations, and over here, if you set this to the folder where you have any music stored, um, it might be your iTunes folder or whatever it is, then once you've set that, over here in the browser, if you click on the little CD looking thing, um, that'll show you all the music that you have stored in that folder. And then uh, once it shows that, then you can find whatever you want and drag that into your project. So. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I've got my Charlie Brown music. So if I play that. Oh, it started over there. But yeah, it's music. Um, so why would I want to do that? Well, a couple things. Number one, I could want to take a section of that or a little snippet and just sample it, use that in my music. Um, I'm not advising you to break any copyright laws, by the way that's up to you um, but the other thing is you can also use that as a reference track so this is something I got from uh, Graham Cochran on the recording revolution.com um, he's got good stuff I like watching his videos but what you can do is set that as a reference track so that you can judge once you get to kind of a finished point how your track sounds against a certain reference track so if you're doing something in a certain style say Charlie Brown music style, then you can just pull something in and just kind of compare it, make sure you have kind of the levels, um, the EQ settings, things like that, relatively close to the reference track that you're using. Now, you can see I've got my default um, template set so that all I have is the master bus. Well, I've got some effects, but I don't show them. And the mix, mix group up here and what I do is on my mix, that's where I'm going to have kind of the final things like some saturation, compression, EQ that affects my whole mix. And I keep that away from the master bus. All I've got on the master bus is um, this the tool that I have muted and I'll use that for mono. And then um, just the span plugin, which I use for to see the EQ settings and correlation. Um, but nothing that changes the sound on there, except when I'm testing mono, of course. Um, and so the reason I do that then is I've got the little birdie that's not in the mix group. Sorry, little birdie. The reference track that's not in the mix group, it's going straight to master. But then the mix goes straight to master so I can kind of make any, any final tweaks up here in the mix group. Um, so just something to think about, obviously personal preference, but that seems to work well. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you today too, though, was as far as arrangements, what you can do is, and I got this tip from um, a guy I know here in Denver, I am Mountain, I am MTN, uh, really good guy, but he does this in Ableton. So what I want to do is I'm just going to create a, a MIDI track and I'm going to use this way up here, not even in the mix. I'm going to put it at the top. I'm going to make this my arrangement track. So what I'll do is just double click to put in a new MIDI clip and drag it out maybe eight bars. And this one I'm going to call intro. Then maybe do another one, do 16 bars call this one verse and then maybe I'll have a pre-chorus or maybe just go straight into a chorus um, you could call it the drop whatever you want to call it right and then keep doing that dragging those out and what this does is it lets you um, set up the way that you think that the song is going to flow so if I've got my reference track in here, maybe what I'll do is go through and listen. Okay, it's got eight bars of an intro, so I'll set that up. Um, maybe it's got a verse of eight bars or 16 bars, whatever it is, I'll set that up. Maybe it's got a pre-chorus, so I'll put eight bars of pre-chorus in there. And so it's not really 
stealing or copying somebody else's song, but it is using kind of that form to, I guess, inspire what you want to do so you can kind of keep it in the ballpark without imitating or, or completely stealing from that person's track. Um, so now once I've done that, I think I'm, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just add in my addictive drums. Which Once it comes up, I'm not going to worry too much about which kit right now, but I am going to take um, way down here, I'm going to take one of my songs. What should I do today? Funky Swing, why not? And nice thing about Addictive Drums is it's got some of these songs set up which are handy just to um, help you kind of sketch something out really fast. And so I've got, um, I'm going to bring in my verse to start with, put that over there. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click L to see my clip launcher over here. And I'm going to drag this into that first scene there. And I'm going to call this scene first. Completely original, I know. And then I'm going to bring in my chorus and call this scene. You got it. And then maybe bring in a bridge. Oops, wrong scene. Make sure you click on the right one. Call this bridge. And that's good. Um, the key thing is when you're bringing this into the clip launcher, I don't know if I can turn mine off or if it's set to do this by default, but make sure that the looping button is clicked over here. See, I brought that one in and it's not on. Oh, because I brought it in over here first. Makes sense. So, but just make sure that those are on so that if you play this for longer than whatever the clip length is that it keeps going or it, it repeats and loops back. Okay, so now if I click on this, right, keeps going, which is what we wanted to do. But say um, that I want to listen to something longer than this one set for four bars, right? Say that I want a clip in here, I'm going to make a new clip that goes for eight bars because I want, the, want it to be the whole intro. Maybe I'm going to play some MIDI in or something. What I can do here is bring this intro clip over here. It's still just a blank clip, right? But because it's set for eight bars, so now... So there you go. Realized I just put the intro um, clip in there, but okay, I'll make it the verse. It's fine. So 16 bars. And so now this will go for 16 bars. A couple things that gives me a visual cue that how far am I through this, right? It's going really slowly compared to what my drum beat is. And I know how far into the verse I am that way. Okay, click that to stop everything going on in there. Click this to stop everything going on over here in the arrangement window. Um, and so, yeah, that just gives you a way to sketch out your your, your whole song really quickly. Um, and then, of course, once you get this the way you like it, then you can drag things back over here. Um, oops. Control D to duplicate it as far as you need, you know, whatever you need to do. And then you know, it just makes it really easy, I think, to sketch it out. And then, of course, once you're past that initial songwriting stage, then you can start, switch everything back over here and start working over here to add risers, effects, uh, vocals, whatever you need to do. So, um, yeah, I think that's all I had for today. But again, just a few quick tips. Songs, reference track, everything straight to master, what you want to keep as your own mix, you send that to the mix group and then send that to the master. And then finally having a skeleton track or an arrangement track up front, up top, that you can drag into the clip launcher and use a clip launcher for creating things quickly too. 
So hope that helps you guys. Um, if you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them down in the comments section. It's always fun. If you have a better way of doing things, it's always good to hear that too. Wouldn't be the first time. Um, if you have a different way that you like to do the bus routing or the group routing, or if you have different ideas about the arrangement tracks, I'd be interested to hear that. I'm always learning new things and I enjoy that. Um, also, just wanted to remind you, I've got a free guide for you called Accelerate Your Music Making in Bitweek Studio. It's at bishopswest.com slash bitweek setup. Uh, just a free gift to you guys. Um, and oh, please like and subscribe. Thanks again for your time. Hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you next time.